Welcome to the Dance Fusion Show on TVU. I'm James Steinhubel and our host, Marianne Kubler, and our guests today, Shay Kubler and Abby Kay. How are you doing, Marianne? I'm doing great, thank you. And what's up today? Um, well, on Monday, we presented, um, remember I told you last time, we had uh, 100 dance studios put together a proposal for reopening, and that was presented to the government, and so now we're in that holding pattern, waiting to see what's happening, but everybody has started the process. I'm getting my hallway carpets cleaned, I've got signs being laminated, starting the process so that if we get the go-ahead, I'm ready to go. That's fantastic. You know, we have a really exciting show for our first show. We have uh, Mr. Shea Kugler of uh, Radical System Art with us. And as uh, our uh, guest host, we have uh, Abby Kay, a local uh, performing artist. Shay, I just wanted to uh, uh, say hello and uh, have you uh, introduce yourself, talk a little bit about your, uh, your company, and then we'll, we'll get a little bit more into uh, some questions that I have. Thank you, James. Uh, it's nice to be on the show. Uh, so I actually grew up in Sherwood Park. Uh, I started in martial arts at uh, Sherwood Park Karate Do, so right in Sherwood Park. Uh, and martial arts was the foundation for me as an artist, and that moved into theater, dramatic arts, and then into dance. So, uh, so my background as an artist started really in martial arts and theater, and then, and then moved into and bridged into dance. Um, Radical System Art is a, is a company, it's a contemporary dance company, but we kind of mix dance and physical theater uh, around, you know, social and uh, political, you know, things that are happening. Right now we're doing a show based on um, isolation, actually, actually, <laughs> which is fairly uh, profound at this moment in time. Uh, it's a show based on social isolation and loneliness. So the company, the company does works that have some kind of social, political uh, kind of commentary, and it's a mixture of dance and physical theater. And obviously the martial arts are an influence towards just the movement and ideology we have for movement. It is so uh, interesting, and if I was brave, I would bring up your uh, website, uh, website and share it, but the internet is, so, so many people are using it, we can get a big stall. But that's why we have uh, Abby Kay with us. A Abby, I'm sure that you had a chance to, to uh, do a little bit of research on Shay, and I'm interested yeah. to hear what you're interested in and what your questions might be. Yeah, of course. Well, first of all, Shay, I just want to say I absolutely love, love, love your work. Um, I watched a couple of your videos, almost all of them, on your website, and they really did give me goosebumps, and I really loved the type of contemporary and modern that I was seeing in the videos, but I wanted to kind of ask, what, what is your perspective on the type of dance that you're, you're going for? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, when I moved to Vancouver, I moved to Vancouver in, uh, well, let's, just, let's say it was over 10 years ago. It was a while ago, but uh, I moved to Vancouver, and um, I was... I was doing ballet, tap, jazz, all the stuff at the studio, um, but, but I, really, uh, I really grabbed onto tap and hip hop, like urban dance forms. Um, so when I moved to Vancouver, those were kind of the two art forms that I was pursuing the, the most. Um, but I went into a training program and started learning different types of movement and movement arts. Uh, and so my company, when I, when I founded it in 2014, kind of had this influence of, I would say, like urban and street dance forms along with the martial arts that I'd studied. Um, I'd spent some focused time in Brazil where I studied capoeira. I went to Japan to study judo and aikido and taiko drumming and, and some traditional uh, Japanese uh, dance forms. And then I also went to China where I studied uh, Shaolin Gong Fu. So uh, yeah, my movement practice was really influenced by this kind of, I think in martial arts, it's kind of a, a raw, pure approach to athleticism. You know, there's, there's this artistic meditative uh, aspect to it but there's also this very technical and very formed uh, aspect of movement so i think my company is always trying to find this bridge point between artistry athleticism uh expression technique there's kind of this balance of both sides so and every show kind of has a different uh, instigation i would say for for what we're doing one of our one of our most popular shows really had a, an influence of jazz we had a tap artist that was in the show the name of the show is telemetry we actually performed in insured park uh it was in 2017 What's that? I love that one. I watched it. <laughs> oh, nice. Excellent. Yeah, yeah so each show kind of has um, a different point of research and a different point for, uh, for creation. So I'm always looking to, to pull in from these different things that I've studied throughout my life. Uh, and, you know, it, it kind of changes with each work. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Amazing work. I just love it. it. You know, it is interesting, the, um, the, 
the pursuit, the, the combination of, uh, you know, in, the inside growth, the intellectual growth, and then almost the uh, kinesiological envelope, you know, of martial arts and that you've gone through. It's a, you know, it's at a doctorate, you know, it's, it's at an expert level. It's very, uh, it's very interesting. My, my question would be is, is as you were coming up on in that, and then you decided to um, include a performing art with that kind of, you know, physical expression, you know, following the rhythm, probably, I guess, is of, of the music. But was there, was there a conflict at the beginning? And then if there was, where did you find the unity in that? Um, you know, funny enough, actually, the unity was there uh, really quickly. Um, I'm sure my, my, uh, my mom can attest to this, but uh, I remember being a child in our backyard and I was making up fight sequences. So I was putting all these patterns together and having, you know, having imaginary enemies and, you know, taking them down and creating patterns and sequences. And actually in the, in the martial art that I studied, it's uh, called Genbukai Karate. The, there's so many kata and kata means forms. You know, it's a set structure of movements. You do them in a row from start to finish. So I think I'd had this training of learning technique, putting it into a form, but then also we did what's called uh, sparring or kumite, which is where you take your techniques and you use it in a free form manner where you're, you're, you're competing with somebody else in real time. Uh, so I think the balance of, if you're learning choreography, if you will, and improvising as a performer in the performing arts, there's a very, very close correlation to martial arts where you learn techniques, you do kata and you do sparring or kumite. So for me, there was, there was really quite a direct line. Um, and I, you know, I, I jumped right into hip hop was one of my favorite things um, because it was kind of this like, how fast can you hit things? How hard can you hit things? You know, how sharp can you be? And that really aligned with the style of martial art that I was studying. Um, so for me, they, they very much connect. Um, and I think that the idea of how we take the internal and, and turn that into the physical craft is very much relevant across so many different forms. And I think that, uh, yeah, the martial arts are really a great foundation for all movement, just as dance is such a huge and an amazing art form for movement, you know, and they're talking about how football players are studying ballet. Uh, I've heard about football players doing tap dancing. Drummers were doing tap dancing back in like the 30s and 40s. So there's, there's dance has a, such a central kind of purpose and value, I think, in movement. And of course, it has such deep history, just as we are as human beings. So yeah, the, the, to me, martial arts and dance are very much connected. Does that take you to any point of, uh, of uh, interested curiosity? Abby, do you have a question before? I wanted to start talking about business, but I don't want to move on too quickly. Yeah, well, I definitely agree that dance is a great way to express, express a lot of emotion. But I do have a question on the music that you were using because it was very instrumental and I love that kind of music. So where did the inspiration come from for all of that music? Or maybe even a specific one you want to you wanna tell? Um, yeah, I mean, I love, I mean, music is essential to me for, for movement. I mean, it doesn't have to be there, but I always feel like you are, especially dance, you're connecting to the music. You're kind of an instrument, you're a visual instrument of the music. You can either be exactly hitting the beats or you can be expressing what the music is expressing to you. So you're kind of a conduit in some ways for what the, the emotion or intention of the music is. Um, and I'm, I, because I grew up doing this kind of percussive art form. So I think of karate as this percussive art form, right? Sharp. It's, it's, it's solid. So I love music that has like a really, uh, really clear drum beat or really clear accents, um, studying hip hop and popping and funk styles, hitting the snare drum and all those clear rhythms. Um, I also love house music, which has a really clear downbeat, which has that kind of drive to it. So I, I've always been connected to those kind of, um, those kind of qualities in music. I mean, I, there's a band that we, we use in this show, Telemetry, and they're an amazing Canadian band called Bad, Bad, Not Good. And they're, an, they're, a, they're a jazz quartet, and they're from Toronto. Um, they've done an amazing amount of covers using jazz music, but covering, you know, hip hop and soul and all these other uh, forms of music. So uh, that's a great example of, of somebody that I, I really admire. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's so interesting. Before I get into the business stuff, because it's just as interesting that, uh, you know, you're from Sherwood Park and we're, you know, we're local community TV that you're here, you know, that you are who you are and that you, that you're uh, Marianne's son, 
in that you, it's such a really, you gave me such really good insight into how you, what a great family and what a great upbringing you had. So it's, uh, it's exciting. I could talk and ask a hundred questions and maybe next time I will, but business. Okay. There you are. You, you, you're emerged as this, you know, well, martial arts, you know, there's a metaphysical element, a metaphysical master, a, a martial art master and a dance master. Of course, there you are brought bang right into Vancouver. But now it's the business of art and you're, you know, it, that's, a, that's a whole other element, you know, and you've mastered that as well. Choreographer, director, uh, performer, you know, that, you know, tell, tell us about the business side. You show up and, you know, here you are. How did you get this going? Uh, well, it's a, being an artist is a hustle. That's for sure. Uh, there's a, there's a mentality of, of constantly keep, keep moving forward, uh, keep improving, getting better. Um, I had a really, I had a real strong passion to make things. Um, it's the reason why I moved to, to Vancouver. I had a goal when I was 18, I was uh, 18, 19. I was already teaching at a number of studios in the, in the greater Edmonton area. So Sherwood Park, Wetaskiwin, and St. Albert, Spruce Grove. Uh, so I was teaching um, all over the place and I was choreographing and creating pieces. And I realized I loved making stuff. I wanted to make stuff. So I, I knew that I needed to, to keep growing. And, and, and so I moved to Vancouver to put myself into a new hub, be surrounded by a lot of, um, you know, very accomplished artists and people that had a lot of experience. Um, and so when I, when I wanted to make a piece, I realized I needed to, first of all, find a way to produce it. Um, so I, I founded a not-for-profit organization and got the board and started to be able to get some support from the funding bodies here in, in Canada, the Canada Council, the BC Arts Council and the city of Vancouver. Um, but really it, it stemmed from just a hunger to create things because no matter what, it, you know, especially as an artist, it never leaves you. The work never leaves you, which, which is a gift and a curse. <laughs> it's a gift and a curse because you're, you're in the studio and then I'd leave the studio and then you'd be writing and watching videos. And then you go back to the studio and work with the dancers. It's like, you know, it's like 12 to 14 hour a day, depending on what you're doing. So that hunger and that drive is really what pushed me into to making work. Um, and the business side of it is always, it's a challenge because as soon as you take something that, that is a passion for you and something that, that uh, supports you, you spiritually in some way, emotionally, uh, and then you turn it into a business, it's hard to still find that enjoyment from it. Uh, so I'm, all, I'm always trying to find ways to, if I can, separate you know, doing the work and the business side of things and then still finding an outlet for me to just be creative openly if it's possible, um, which has really been a gift in some ways with this space and time. Uh, I've gone back to, to, I create music for my own shows now. So I'm starting to do sound composition and music composition. Uh, writing is another thing I'm really interested in, like creative writing and, you know, creating stories and worlds. So the, the challenge with the business is creating space for yourself to, to have the business, but to also have the, the artist still be fed because one doesn't work without the other. That's for sure. Now, uh, Abby, you know, you're in a, you're in the, be the beginning phase and you're developing, you know, excellent, uh, excellent business skills. Ha from what Shay said there, did any question come to mind that you'd like to ask him? Um, I guess what made you go to Vancouver, maybe what made you not go to Toronto? Because for me, I'm a, a musician, singer, songwriter. I have a CD out. I've been a dancer for 10 years. I'm now a dance teacher as well. And I'm kind of looking to expand myself and go somewhere different. So I'm kind of in the, between the crossroads, Vancouver or Toronto. So what made you pick Vancouver? Uh, that's interesting. I mean, there's a few things. I was, when I was a dancer, I was taking some workshops, uh, Street Groove and Groove Street were from a company that's from Vancouver. Um, and so I made some connections with those people in Vancouver when I was around 17, 18. Um, the other side of it is that, you know, Vancouver is really kind of seen as Hollywood North. Uh, so there's also the film and television side of it. So there was the dance training side of it because I knew these, these people that I'd worked with um, or, or learned from. And then the, yeah, having the ability to be on t to work in TV and film and to have more opportunity. Plus it was, it's this proximity to Edmonton. Um, you know, my family, largely all of my family is in Edmonton. So it also gave me the ability to be able to come back and forth for, for visits and, you know, just be close and proximity was a big thing for me. Plus I think I'm more of a West coast person. Um, I've been to, well, I hadn't really been to Toronto for that long, but I visited Toronto and I wasn't really sure if it was really like the, the city for me, just, just on a, a, a vibrancy, a vibe <laughs> type of level. But, uh, but I have a lot of friends in Toronto. I love the city, but I definitely am more West coast. Um, it just made sense for me. Yeah. And I think that's the thing. If it just aligns with, with your values and it makes sense, 
Um, and I was just, I was very fortunate within the first year that I was in, in Vancouver, I booked a commercial and worked on a, a, a movie and, you know, had this training opportunity. So it just made sense for me. Awesome. Thank you. you know, yeah. That's, uh... I was just going to say to Abby, if you're not certain where you should go, have you spent some time in both cities? I mean, obviously not right now. You can't go anywhere, but right. It's, it's, um, it's not a bad idea to spend some time and, and try to see what kind of connections you can make, right? Um, Vancouver has a lot of stuff going on and there is a lot of television and whatever production going on there a lot. Um, and there's dance companies. There's also, they always have cruise ship auditions. I'm not sure what you're looking at getting into, but there's a lot of things you can do in Vancouver, right? Yeah. Same. Same applies to Toronto too. So like Shay, he tried both cities and Vancouver was where his heart was just because of what it offered, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that I'll definitely try to touch in both places and then find my pathway, whichever one takes me the farthest. Yeah, it's hard because you never know. It could, it could be um, black one day and the light opens up the next day and you've got yourself a job and everything's opening up, right? It's really, it is like shooting shooting crafts, right? You never know what tomorrow will bring. Yeah. You know, Shay, just because of the time that we're in, and it's just a question. And I, I just think that, you know, your insight would be uh, valuable at this time, you know, being someone who um, has found a way to uh, combine the combative spirit with a creative spirit. And I, I think that, you know, as people get going on restart, I think, you know, we, we got to get back at it, right? You got to, you got to, you got to get back in it and fight at it, not fight, but, you know, engage in that uh, and, but also be creative and people want to do something new this time, right? So from that point of view, someone who's done that, what kind of words of, uh, you know, insight and strength can could you share? Oh, wow. Uh, you know, I think, I don't know. I, I think that there's, there's this, I think it's a, there's a quote about the art of not doing is a very challenging art form. The art of not doing. And obviously, I'm not saying we want to be lazy and not do anything and just sit on our butts all day. But I, but I think that, that people having space and time, you know, there's a lot of conversations around people being distracted now. Social media, our phones, uh, technology, our, our availability to information and the presence of media. And people are a lot of the times distracting themselves. And they, I, was, I was listening to this uh, interview with uh, a neurologist and she was talking about how we distract ourselves from all the inner thoughts that are going on, all the things that we have going on inside us. So I think that having the ability to have some space and time and maybe, I don't know, do some self investigation around the things that like you're lacking, like, Oh man, I'm not exercising like I used to, or I'm not playing music like I used to, or, you know, certain aspects of your, yourself that you're not expressing anymore. I think that if you can find that, I think that I always look at life as kind of a balance, you know, like I was talking with the creation and the business, I think that a lot of people, and I mean, I definitely know that this is true for me at times, business takes over and, and we're missing on maybe the other side of things, the expressive, artistic, creative person. So I think if we can, you know, the ability to have space and time and to have a space to just listen to yourself and investigate and, and you know, ponder some questions for yourself is really important. It's really critical. Um, at the same time, I think that if we can get into that side of, of seeing what you need and seeing what feeds you, that is going to make you a better business person. That's going to make you a better, uh, a better person in your, in your company or in the group that you work with. Uh, there's, there's such a balance that I think we, we lack sometimes, uh, which everybody I challenge with. I, it's a challenge for me too. So, I mean, finding balance is, is something that I think maybe we can have a little bit more of when we come out of this. But I also know that I'm very fortunate to be where I am and to have the support. And I think we're all very fortunate to be in Canada and to have the support that we have from the government as much as we do. So it's always about um, balance. And I think that uh, I hope that everybody finds a little bit of a new drive towards both, both the business and both things that make them happy and passionate. And that, that could be both. They could meet in the middle, maybe. That's excellent. Uh, Mr. Shea Kubler, uh, Radical System Art. So I mean, when we have you back next time, uh, you know, can we, uh, can we get you in the, in the studio or the dojo and we can, uh, we can experience the, uh, the power and magnificence of your art? 
<laughs> okay, sure. We'll try, and, okay. we'll try and find a studio, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Coming up, Olivia Schott and Peyton Russell. Thank you, sir. We'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Okay, we're back on Dance Fusion exclusively on TVU, and we have Peyton Russell and Olivia Scott with us. How are you guys doing? Doing pretty good, thanks. How about you? Good, good, good. So uh, COVID's kind of tripped you up. You're, uh, you're back home and you didn't get to leave. Uh, where are you going to go when you can travel again? Where are you guys back, heading back to? We'll start, we'll start with you, Peyton. Uh, definitely going to go back to Vancouver. Um, I miss it a lot. Uh, all my friends and like my dad's family kind of down there. Um, definitely miss them. So I would definitely uh, take a trip down there and check my apartment out and see how it's doing. <laughs> awesome. Yourself, Olivia. Yeah, honestly, the same. Going back to Vancouver, checking out my little townhouse with my three roommates, seeing some girls and guys from my program and kind of, um, yeah, just being in the Vancouver area and the dance world's there. That's good. There's so much questions about what you guys are both doing. Abby, do you have any questions that you want to uh, want to ask right away? Yeah, of course. Um, so what, what was it like to apply to a place like the Source Dance Company. I know that they're well, amazing studios in Vancouver or even Joffrey Ballet School. What was it like to apply? What was the process? So I actually applied for both Joffrey and the Source online because I was, when the Source, I found out that they were having an audition. Um, I was actually in Miami with Joffrey at the time. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't exactly be in Vancouver to audition live. So I sent in, um, a jazz, a contemporary, and a hip hop, and an across the floor combination. Uh, sent that into the director, Joanne Kasusich, and she emailed me back the day of the audition saying that I made it into the company, and here I am in the company. It's pretty wow. great. Yeah, it's amazing. Awesome. So that, that's, that's really good. And uh, for Livia, you know, she's, got, uh, she's got an interesting training program. Did you, did you have a chance to look at that, Abby? Do you have a question for her? Um, so you said you went to ITP? Yeah, I'm in ITP currently. Awesome. So I guess for yourself as well, what was the process like for you to go through and get in? I know that there's a lot of things that you have to go through in the process and um, it can be really hard to get into such an amazing professional program like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, what happened was I actually flew to Vancouver for the day to audition there because there was only two, there was one in Vancouver and one in Calgary, but the one in Calgary was the day I was competing in competitions. So I ended up flying down for the day and mm -hmm. I had to fill out a full like questionnaire kind of thing telling um, about myself, how long I've been dancing, um, what styles I'm most interested in. And then we had an audition and we did um, across the floor, so just like turns and jumps and kicks, and then we did a combo, and then we did some improv across the floor, and yeah, it was about two hours, I want to say, and yeah, and then I got the email a few weeks later saying I had gotten accepted, and then yeah, that's pretty much how it went. <laughs> That's awesome. Fantastic. It's fantastic. It's just, it's so nice to have you guys, you know, back here and that, you know, Marianne was, had made it available to come on the very first show, Dance Fusion show. Can you imagine if you had Dance Fusion when you guys were, uh, you both, you were with the studio for 16 years and, and now you're, you know, professional and on the verge of being, you know, worldwide professional, uh, you know, you know, dance professionals. That's so exciting. Tell us about your, quickly tell us about your experience each with Dance Fusion. Just give us a few words and then we're going to, you know, have you, uh, you know, do some dancing for us. That'd be great. Okay. So my experience with Dance Fusion has been nothing but amazing. I've gotten so many opportunities, not only just to compete, but also to just perform for people. Like so many benefit concerts we've done, parades, um, shows on New Year's Eve, like you name it, we've probably done it. Um, so it's just been amazing. The teachers here are incredible. They have so much knowledge, so much information to give you. It's just great. I, I would highly recommend it to anybody. That's awesome. And yourself, uh, Olivia. Yeah, I, I mean, my mom is a teacher here and she has been since I started. And I mean, I grew up here. I was here almost every single day for countless hours. And it has just grown to be a second home, you know. Marianne has become like a second mom to me. 
and the teachers have so much knowledge, as Peyton said, and have really shaped me to the dancer I am. Not even just the dancer, but the person, because I feel like dance is more than just about the movement. It's about the lessons you learn and the passion and the commitment sort of things. So yeah, I could I could talk about dance fusion forever, but like it's truly a second home and I wouldn't have traded it to train anywhere else for anything, so. That is so good. Okay, so we're going to uh, pause and we're gonna have you back one at a time and let's just see, let's see your art. It's so, so exciting. <laughs> do you want me, I'm just gonna do an audio check to see how loud it is. Okay. Okay, we're good to go. Go. I I wish I could swim Like dolphins Like dolphins can swim Though nothing Will keep us together We could be ten forever and ever. Nice. Thank you so much. That was fantastic. Yes. That was very good. So Thank what you. what were you, uh, what were we seeing there? And what were we seeing there? What kind of what kind of moves? What what were you doing there? Um, I was just there was a lot of arm and just that was improvisation, so I just kind of let the music carry me and tell me what to do, basically. Um, mm -hmm. Whatever I felt, I did, I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it was, all, it was a lot of arms, but also a lot of like legs and balances. Mm -hmm. And there was a turn in there and stuff. <laughs> There's a lot of technicality though, like the way that you're planting your feet, the way that you're holding your arms, your, your, your whole body structure. Like there's, there's a lot of technical dance that's happening there. What, what were you seeing, Abby? Uh, I was definitely seeing a lot of contemporary in there for sure, of course, because you do study contemporary, so I can definitely see um, lights in there, but also I can see amazing ballet training. So just a question, uh, there's different syllabuses. Did you study in the RAD, Royal Academy, or did you do Giacchetti? Because there's that Russian in uh, RAD, but there's also the Italian in Giacchetti. So which one did you study in? We did, I did Giacchetti. Um, I did it all, I did it from the beginning all the way till advanced one, um, cause then I graduated after that and everything, but yeah, so I did Chiquetti like my whole life. Um, yeah. I have done, when I went to Joffrey, we did a little bit of RAD, but it wasn't like strict syllabus or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can definitely see elements of Chiquetti in there. It was lovely. Oh, thank you so much. You ready? Without you holding me up, I'm strong enough for both of us. Both of us, both of us, both of us. I am a giant. I'm 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 a giant
Um, yeah, it was about the same. It was, I didn't plan any of it. It was improv, but I listened to the song once before and I kind of got a feel of the accents and kind of like the vibe of it. But really, I just kind of danced my little heart out, kind of went with the flow, what I felt like doing and everything. Yeah. It was good. It was good. We'll, we'll, let you, we'll let you catch your breath. And Abby, what were you seeing there? Yeah, I can definitely see you're going for a more jazzy vibe in there. I really love that. Uh, is that what you kind of focus on is a jazzy vibe? Is that what you really like to do? Yeah, I'm kind of in between. I love contemporary and everything in that genre, but I also have always loved jazz and jazz technique and jumping in as high as I can and turning as much as I want. So I'm really in between, but I just felt like doing some jazz today. <laughs> awesome. So I, I, I'm seeing it. I'm not, I, don't re I can't label it, but I'm seeing, you know, your, the way your feet are landing, you know, the way that you're, 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 lit, you're positioning your body. Like there's a lot of balance. There's arm extension. There's hand going on. Just describe, uh, on Abby, just describe a little bit of the technicals, and then I'll get you to, to finish off with that, Olivia. Uh, the technicals of jazz, like the arms? What we, what we were seeing there. That, there was a lot of technical there. Uh, I was seeing a lot of ballet in there too, but I was also seeing some hip hop too in the popping and the locking um, and ballet as well. Of course, you've been studying at such a professional school, so uh, you've definitely got all of the, the arms in the correct position. There's nothing out of line that I really love to see. And yeah, have you studied hip hop too to get... Um, that the pop, popping and locking as well as the perfect positioning of your arms? Yeah, well, um, I did hip hop when I was really young, like eight and 10 and everything, but I kind of quit because um, my modern training um, conflicted with the timing and I chose to learn um, modern. And then I went back to hip hop my senior year of high school. I took a class and then in Vancouver we do a lot of hip hop so that has really pushed me outside of my comfort zone and learn how to do that and it's definitely been um, a challenge and a huge learning experience but you know adds a little bit of flavor into everything so yeah definitely i can definitely see the flavor that's so good it's so good is uh are, are peyton and uh, marianne uh, available there are they are they close by Excellent, yeah. excellent. Just get, get everybody close in there, and uh, yeah, I'm back. you know that that is uh, that's so good. You know, I honestly, with both you, uh, Peyton and Olivia, you we could interview you for a whole show. So we look forward to uh, keeping in touch, and uh, and we can share with this Zoom environment as you go around the world, because I'm sure you're both headed that way. So thank you. Uh, Mary Ann and uh, thank you Abby Kay and that is uh, that's our show for today our first episode of uh, the Dance Fusion show exclusively on uh, on TVU. Bye. Bye. Thank, Bye. You. thank you. Thank you.